Today is Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is the celebration or the commemoration of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. There you can imagine the scenario. Jesus was riding on the donkey, the king that he is, and his disciples are uh, following him and people were lining the streets and they were screaming and shouting and at the top of their lungs, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And this is a quotation of Psalm 118 when the psalmist was um, going through lots of stuff and he wants to make a testimony. He goes into the temple and people say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And there was cause for celebration. This was Passover. People were gathering from all over the world. They come back to Jerusalem and they want to go into the temple to worship God, to celebrate their um, liberation, their salvation from slavery to Egypt and to Pharaoh, and their dedication to God. That's what Passover is about. But that's not always the case. I know many of us would like to be gathered at Patalin Jaya Gospel Hall to sing to God together, to worship Him, to listen to the Word of God together, and to, um, after that, have fellowship together for coffee hour. But it's not possible now due to the movement control order, the spread of coronavirus. And this reminds me of Psalm 42, to the choir master, a muscle of the sons of Korah. So this is a psalm that's by or associated with a group of people who uh, led worship in the Jerusalem temple. And he writes, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food, day and night. While they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God. With glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil in me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. And here's stanza two that was stanza one with its chorus, and now here's stanza two with its chorus. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar, deep cause to deep, at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? And here's the chorus. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. Now this song goes into Psalm 43 with a stanza and then with the same chorus, but we'll just focus on Psalm 42 uh, in this sermon. What is this about? Well, as the deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. The psalmist thirsts for God. Just as water is necessary for life, so is God necessary for our spiritual life. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? What is he saying? What he's saying is that he's not in Jerusalem. He's not in the temple. He is somewhere outside and he has been out for a while now. And he is asking, when shall I come and appear before God in the temple in Jerusalem? Because he was a part of the sons of Korah. You know what I mean? He was a worship leader in the temple of God. And he enjoyed 
being in the temple and appearing before God. And now he's outside. His soul thirsts for God, for the living God. My tears have been my food day and night. He's crying. He's lamenting. While they say to me, these people outside say to me, all the day long, where is your God? Why isn't he bringing you back into Jerusalem? Why aren't you allowed to gather with all the rest of God's people in the temple? Why are you outside now with us? Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul and he's recollecting something that happened in the past, how he would go with the throng and lead God's people in the in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, a multitude-keeping festival like the festival of Passover that we, we commemorate Jesus' triumphal entry, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. So he remembers Palm Sundays of old, so to speak. How he would go with the throng and he would lead in procession to the house of God. He was part of the worship team and he's part of the welcoming team. And he ushers people into the seats in the temple, into PJ Gospel Hall, with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. But that's all in the past now. His current reality is that he's no longer able to do that. Something is going on in his life has taken him away from the house of God. So he sings, he laments. Why are you cast down, O my soul? He's preaching to himself, to his own soul. He's talking to himself right now. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Instead, he should hope in God. Because he shall again praise him. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him. One day I will return to Jerusalem. One day I will return to the temple and appear before God and leading the throng of people to worship God. I hope in God. He is my hope, my salvation, my God. And that is the right attitude. Sometimes in our lives, such as times like these, our souls may be cast down. Our souls may be in turmoil within me as we practice social distancing and we worry about our friends and families and everyone around the country and all over the globe as the death toll is getting higher and higher and it's getting scary. Hope in God. For I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. But why wasn't He in the temple? Where is He? Where was the psalmist? Stanza 2 continues. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Now, here's the map. Right there in the circle, red circle in the middle, that's Jerusalem. That's where the temple is situated. That's where he wants to be. That's where the house of God is. But right now, he's way up in the north, outside of the promised land, outside of the holy land. He's on the other side of the Jordan River, just slightly north of Dan, Mount Hermon. He's in a foreign land. He's in a foreign place. He's in a pagan world. So his soul is cast down within him as he remembers God from the land of Jordan and of Hermon from Mount Nizah. He wants to return to Jerusalem. He wants to be gathered with God's people in the temple during this festive season. Instead, he's outside. Instead, the temple is inaccessible to him. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you. From the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Misa, deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. I am overwhelmed because he recognizes God's sovereignty. Yes, waterfall, he recognizes that this is God's waterfall. Yes, his breakers, his waves have gone over. The breakers, the waves have gone over him, but it is God's breakers. God's waves have gone over him. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love. He understands this. 
and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. So even as you are practicing uh, social distancing, even as you are uh, locked up at home, uh, even as you want to be gathered with all the saints face to face, but you remember, by day the Lord commands his steadfast love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. So he says to God, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? It is not as though God really forgets us, but that is exactly how, but that is really how he felt. So he was being honest with God. He said, God, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Because these enemies, all day long, they were asking, where is your God? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taught me while they say to me all the day long, where is your God right now? There's coronavirus going on. Where is your God? If your God is good and all-powerful, why does he allow pain and suffering in the world? Now, there are good philosophical answers to these questions, but that is not the kind of answer that people need in the midst of their suffering. And so you just lament. You cast the same, Oh my soul, why are you cast down? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him. One day, one day, I will praise Him again in the temple, in Jerusalem, my salvation and my God. Now that's the experience of um the psalmist. But there's a difference between the psalmist and us today. For the psalmist, in order to worship God, in order to praise God again, he has to go back into Jerusalem to the temple to worship God. But today, it's different. Jesus, he met the Samaritan woman. And the Samaritan woman asked Jesus, where do we worship God? Our ancestors say we worship him at Mount Gerizim. And you Jews say worship God in Jerusalem. Where is the right place to worship God? Jesus says, right now, Jerusalem. But one day is coming and it's already here. Where we worship God, not in this place or that physical locality, but rather worship God in spirit and in truth. And here is the truth. Jesus Christ has entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. He went into the he went into the temple. He looked around. He's not impressed. And he walked out. And by the end of the week, he was crucified outside the city of Jerusalem. And right there is salvation for us. It's this new exodus a new Passover. Jesus Christ died on the cross and on the third day, he rose again from the dead so that whosoever believes in him would not perish, would not be enslaved to Satan, to sin and to the world, but rather have a new salvation song to sing, have access to God, you don't have to go to a certain place, a certain location in order to worship God. But right now, we worship God in spirit and in truth. For we have come to a different city, not the Jerusalem of old. Hebrews chapter 12. For you have not come to what may be touched. It's not a physical thing anymore. It's not a physical place anymore. And here's talking about Mount Sinai. A blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers back that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses himself, Moses said, I tremble with fear. No, 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 we have not come to that kind of a mountain. You have come to Mount Zion. 
and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Not the earthly one, not Jalal Gassing, but the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, a new Passover, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, appearing before God. That's what the psalmist wanted. And you have it right now, through Jesus Christ, to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. Why? Because of the sprinkled blood of Jesus that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. But that's not all. Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. We are not a people without hope. In Jesus Christ, we have hope for the future. Although coronavirus hits us very hard, and people are suffering, and some of us may fall victim to it, and we may even die, but we are not a people without hope. The dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. So it began with the Passover in Exodus, where God saved his people from slavery, from Pharaoh, from Egypt. And through the years, they built a temple to worship God. And the psalmist in Psalm 42, he really wanted to be there with all his brothers and sisters in God and to worship God in Jerusalem in time of festivities. And that story climaxed with Jesus Christ as he entered that Palm Sunday into Jerusalem and he went to the temple, he looked around the temple and he said, this is not it. So by the end of the week, he died on the cross outside of the city to save us, to liberate us from Satan, from sin and from death. And today, even as we worship God using online means, uh, as we are locked down at home, our worship is not one that is limited by geography. Our worship is not one that is limited by a physical building. Rather, our worship is in spirit and in truth. We have come together to the heavenly Jerusalem. We are united with all the brothers and sisters throughout the ages. And this is just a foretaste of what is to come. One day, of course, we will be gathering again at Fataling Jaya Gospel Hall. And that will be cause for celebration. But more than that, we look forward to the day where we are gathered together as God's people in a new heaven and new earth, a new Jerusalem, where there will be no more death, no more tears, no more mourning. All those things, all these things, including the coronavirus, will pass away. So may God bless you. This Palm Sunday, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.